Sané's done very well here. Can he get his cross in? Done very well. Well, Schweier scores against the doubt. Look at the corner. That's it's all in the lead. Shoots for Schweier. For Schweier was simply the best. Deepcliff I read widely your roots and you have a strong feel for this area and tell me the soccer field here is this where you played your soccer at junior level yes it started here uh, amateur level and school football that's where I used to trade my skills I used to, to to tell stories with my body and Lucas tells me that you grew up in zone 3 he was in zone 5 and that even as a young kid the name got round about shoes and that you became a household name here. Yeah, well, fortunately, I uh, was one of the most talented uh, players uh, to come out of uh, Deep Kluf. And fortunate enough, uh, I, I did take care of that, uh, that talent. And it has brought me here today where I'm talking to you, uh, Doc. Sandy soccer fields, no grass <coughs> soccer fields. Can imagine having played here and you have to go and play at Ellis Park becomes even more easier. Yeah, we enjoyed ourselves here tremendously. And Shoes, when you were a young kid, who were your soccer heroes? Zero Mahiro comes from Deep Luf. He played for Pirates. Right. Uh, Congo Malebani played for Swallows uh, when it was called Big 15. Jamba Sama? Bravo for Jamba. Jamba is from uh, Orlando, but uh, uh, I think he... he he did uh, trade his skills with uh, the locals. We had uh, the, the Maja family. Almost the whole family played for, for Swallows. So I've learned something from you today, Shoes. Yeah. <laughs> My passion in cricket was always at grassroots. Uh, you seem to have that same passion, would that be right? Yes, I mean, uh, if we don't take care of uh, the youth, uh, uh, the, the future will be doomed. You touch the landmine, you go for a jog around the pitch, all right? There's, there's talent, but talent on its own is not good enough. You have to nurture that talent and then direct it into, 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 into good use. She was speaking to many of your soccer peers, <coughs> soccer scribes, they've all told me that you are one of the most gifted soccer players, most skilled soccer players ever to have played for this country. And there's a beautiful comment from one of the TV commentators. He said the following, he holds on to the ball as if it was tightened to his feet with wires with a relative amount of ease. I think it's beautiful. Was tight as when it as when it Yes! The question I want to ask you is, were you born with this fantastic skills or did you have to work very hard, become a soccer workaholic to attain those skills? Uh, thanks, and I'll take uh, that uh, as a compliment. Uh, I think it was a God-given talent, but uh, uh, on top of that, I managed to, to take care of it and uh, to really enhance and, and grow from there, from the talent that was given to me. Uh, I used to, to train in these uh, fields as an individual and with friends uh, and play school football around here. And people would say a lot about the way I was playing football. And the shot from Michel! Oh, Shoes Michel! Another one for the collection! You know, and uh, till the, the, my last days of my professional football, I still play football. And to me, it's like, uh, it's like my life. A religion? Yeah, it's like a religion. And uh, I'm, it's like I'm doing poetry with my, with my body, the way I play football. The Turkish people used to say that the ball looks good on me. It's like a clothing. And they say you had beautiful feet, and although you're not a tall person, you were pretty quick around the soccer field. Yes, uh, I used to be uh, very agile and uh, going through, uh, negotiating my way uh, <clears throat> between uh, the, the defenders and their opposition side. And uh, I used to enjoy it. I enjoyed more of my amateur football and school football, more than uh, professional football. Why? 
because uh, amateur or at school, uh, one is in a position to express himself more. Now, professional football, uh, you sometimes the coaches restrict you, so one is not uh, left to express himself, to tell stories with the, with their bodies. And uh, I would love to do that. Shoes, you played three times for Kaiser Chiefs in the late 80s. Interesting for the second and third team, and then in 1993, and then again after you came back from Turkey. You went back to them in 2002, three times. Now, Kaiser Chiefs is a glamour club. It's a big brand. It's a huge club, like Orlando Pirates. Tell me what it was like to play for Kaiser Chiefs, this big club. Well, as a child, I supported Kaiser Chiefs, and uh, I really wanted to be part of uh, that uh, success story. So that's how I always wanted to be remembered as a success story. That is why I chose to, to, to play for Kaiser Chiefs. I could have played for Pirates, Swallows and the other teams because they are uh, household names too. But uh, I happened to, to like Kaiser Chiefs and uh, that's where I, I was uh, given the opportunity to express myself and to tell stories with my body, with my skills. And tell me about the Pirates Chiefs derby. What it was it like to play in that derby? It's amazing. Uh, uh, I'm even having goosebumps on, and having butterflies in, in, in my system. Uh, 2003-04, can you recall you beat them to love? Yes, that's another uh, game that uh, it's, it's always uh, in my mind. Let's look at that corner, and Chiefs are in the lead! Shoots for show! The winner it and Shoots for show will come out. It's Villa Mokpara, plays it wide. Karaba Musasa, David Karaba scores! Chiefs has two! Shoots Musou! Look at the diamonds that you were talking about, beating Mokpara and just lifting that ball. He knew what he wanted to do. He picked up his man and there. Chiefs is on song. <laughs> and Parrot is dancing. Man of the match. John shoots Michel at 37. Would you believe it? It was a, a, a sweet win, but at the same time, like I said, Pirates is one of the top sides in the country. And to beat them, I mean, you'll be hurting a lot of people, maybe <laughs> half the population of this country. You know? But at the same time, there are that disadvantage, that uh, it's, it's an advantage to other people and half, people, half of, of the South African population at that point in time, you find that they are happy. Yeah, yeah. So in 1993, you transferred from Giant Blackpool to Chiefs. It's a record transfer fee, quarter million rand. Yeah. Right. But now the world of soccer is open to South Africa. Man United, Arsenal come, you have two games, four Chiefs against them. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you signed off off you go to Turkey. What happened? There was this particular player that uh, they were eyeing. And uh, after our game against uh, Manchester United, I believe they changed their minds that they won the number 10. Uh, that was you? That was me, that was Shoes Mushel. Let's be swaying on the far side with Adams. He's got the skill, goes past Tony Adams. And then that's how I left uh, South Africa. But I didn't want to go to, to Turkey because uh, uh, there's uh, abundance of football. Uh, there's a lot of balls to kick around here in South Africa. So why did you go? Uh, well, on its own, it shows success. It shows that uh, uh, shoes you are better than uh, most of people here. Uh, here's a challenge. Go and trade your skills, uh, trade leather. With the, with the Europeans. That's how I went to Turkey. It was difficult the, the first uh, few days. The only thing that I knew was uh, their history, the Ottoman Empire and things like that. But uh, I said to myself, uh, there's no difference. I mean, the ball in Turkey is not uh, four cornered. You know, it's still round, it's, it's a size five, and uh, bring it on. But you were there for 10 years, yeah. different culture, Muslim country, different people. It must have been tough. Yes, I mean, uh, being away from home, your family, your friends, your fans, you know, uh, your peers, where you're more comfortable. 
you know, and uh, venturing into the unknown. But uh, because of my strong will, I said to myself, bring it on. And I went to tech in 93, and uh, for the mere fact that uh, I spent 10 years, that says it all. And you became a sporting icon, so I'm told. And did you play in the European Champions League for one of the Turkish clubs? Yes, I played uh, for Fenerbahce, one of the top sides like Pirates or Chiefs here at home. And uh, I remember we played against uh, uh, Parma. It's, it's an Italian side, one of the games that uh, I enjoyed. And uh, Chipa Masinga, one of our top strikers, came to, he was watching uh, that game. And uh, he said to me that uh, the, the teammates at, uh, at his club, at Bari, uh, they really appreciated the way I played. You know? And it was on its own, it was uh, a blessing and a compliment. Can you talk the Turkish lingo? Yeah, it's a very difficult language. I never thought that I would Let's understand. Hear. And uh, when they say hello, they say merhaba. Uh, but that they took from the Arabic uh, language, because the Arab, Arabs say marhaba, they don't say merhaba. And then good morning is gunaydan. Shoes at age 38 years, one month and 13 days, you are the oldest soccer player to represent your country. Do you know that? Yes, and uh, I'm proud of that. But hold on, let me go beyond that. <laughs> In 2003, you're age 38. You're back with Chiefs. You score the most goals for your team. It's Nengo Masha that joins in attack. Trash Nengo Masha now standing in Fredericks. Chiefs will show! They won the championship 203, 204, 204, 05. You're 38. Yeah. Then 206, Clive Barker takes you across to Amazulu. Yeah. You play with them till 2008. You're now 42. Yeah. Uh, shoes, most people would have retired mid 30s. How have you done it? To me, it's just a number, like they always say. And uh, I always tell people that I'm not a, a dairy product. I don't have an expiry date, you know, and uh, I'll play as long as I can. And the moment, it, I, I believe that the moment you stop moving, you die. Choose the 1996 Africa Cup of Nations. That's got to be the highlight of your career. Well, I was always waiting for, for that call-up, and it came at the right time, and uh, I happened to be one of the guys that uh, uh, influenced the game, influenced that tournament for us to, to, to win that, uh, that AFCON uh, trophy. And uh, that, again, it brought uh, South Africa into one unit. You know, it, it, uh, a lot of people uh, say that uh, it was like a truce. You know, people of different creed, people of different religion, color, and all coming that. Coming together. Coming together to support Bafana Bafana. Your opening match was against Cameroons. Yeah. Clive says it was so important to win that match for the reason you just said, to get the whole country behind the team. You beat them three love. He said you were brilliant. Yes, uh, it was so amazing. And uh, it, for us to, to get a, a, a brilliant and a kick start to, to the tournament and uh, to get the momentum going, we had to, by hook or crook, uh, win the first game against Cameroon. And uh, the Cameroon side was, were not just a, a walkover. I mean, they are, they are a force to be reckoned with. And a chance for Cameroon and the header over the top from uh, Georges Mouyemi. And uh, unfortunately for them, uh, we were on song on that day. Mishweo. Good back here, Mishweo. John Mishweo, number three. That surely must be the final nail in the Cameroon coffin as John Mishweo makes it number three for South Africa. Now the quarterfinals, you play Algeria. 
You one love up, they score in the 85th minute. From the kickoff, the ball goes to you. Uh, we were chasing the game uh, uh, after that, and uh, I got a pass from uh, Helman Kelele. And the only thing that was uh, on my mind was to take the ball to beat a player or to take a shot. Helman and Kalele moves forward. The ball runs away from him. The goal scorer for Algeria gets the ball away onto the far side, though. It still falls to South Africa. It's in the back of the net. Two goals in two minutes, and South Africa are back in front. I did set myself up very well. Because like they say in the football uh, cycles, your first touch is important. It's going to determine your next move. And then my next move was that drive. I took a shot and uh, it went uh, bottom of the corner of, 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 of the, the, the goals. And uh, we got a goal from there. The semi-final, you play against Ghana. They are the Brazilians of African football. We win three love. Clive Barker says to me he believes that performance is the best ever by a national soccer team, Bafana Bafana, and he scored two goals. Yeah, and it was a final in the making, because Ghana, uh, in that year, I mean, they, they had uh, one of the, the best uh, sides in, 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 in Africa, if not in the world. And uh, we, we were not even sure about it because uh, to me it was, like I said, I mean, the final, uh, the, the final in the making. And uh, they pressurized us for about uh, the, uh, the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game. We, we, we didn't see the ball. You know, they were pressurizing us and all that. And then uh, we, we got a corner. Oh, the Chance here for Fish. The ball came to me, it was up hanging in the air, and I went for, for a bicycle kick, back of the net. I wanted to jump out of the stadium and go home. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. And then from there, the team settled down and we started playing football. But you scored a second goal. It was brilliant too. I mean, we were on the ball for about, uh, I think we had more than 20 touches before I scored. And I made this uh, good run, and Doctor unleashed a, a brilliant pass. Run through here and onside, South Africa. There's three of them. Can Mishwell get another one? Great run from Mishwell. They've done it. They have done it. South Africa have taken the lead. And then we won the final. I think I don't have words to explain that. Uh, and uh, for the mere fact that it brought uh, South Africa into one unit and it was like a truce to, to, to this country. It played a, um, a good role in bringing people together. Can he get a second? Yeah, lays it on. This is a chance, yes! Mark Williams has scored! Kamalo laid it on. Mark Williams tucked it past the keeper. And 2-0 now, and certainly it must be all over. Uh, it, was, it was so emo emotional. Yeah, and I didn't, it was so difficult for me to go back home. I wanted to go to my mom here in Deep Cliff. And I believe that uh, there were crowds at, at my place. People were on top of my, my grandmother's house and all that. And I said to myself, no, I'm not going home. I'll see them tomorrow. Wonderful. But uh, uh, I really wanted to celebrate with my family. The nickname Shoes. Where did it come from? Who gave you this nickname and why? Believe you me, uh, Ali, uh, I don't know. And uh, I even made appeals that uh, the person uh, who gave me the name should uh, come forward. And uh, till today, it, it never happened. But uh, another amazing thing, coincidentally, my surname has got a shoe in between. And uh, more of white people, they call me Mushu. You know, so, and I've even coined that. I've changed it into more shoes for the kids. You know, uh, appealing to everyone that let's give these kids shoes. Let's lift them off of the ground. Shoes, these kids. I mean, what, what is their background? I mean, where do they come from? They're obviously less fortunate. Yeah, more of them. Uh, the they have. Uh, challenges some have lost their their parents right. some were affected by xenophobia we've got uh, kids from mozambique 
from uh, Zimbabwe. Eight, or, eight orphans? Yes, some of them. And uh, some, they, they, they don't have parents. They, they don't have guardians. We call him our arena star. And what that means is that this is um, a personality who comes through to the center and introduces us to potential sponsors, supports us financially, and provides in-kind donations like these t-shirts. So more shoes for you means he's for us. I used the football to, to take me out of uh, misery and uh, I'm in a position to use football and to use my expertise for the better. You became some big mentor to us. This recorder made me feel very happy and I'm very proud of myself. When you played and you got the ball, can you try express me what it sounded like when the crowd it sounded like bees in a beehive, you know? But that uh, would uh, stare me and then push me to, to perform. Motivate you? Yeah, motivate me. And uh, all the time when I step inside uh, the field, I always thought about the three Fs. And that is my f family, my friends, and my fans. Tell me about some of the best soccer players in South Africa you played with or against. Well, Lucas Khadeb as a defender, uh, Sizwe Mitaung, uh, the late Sizwe Mitaung as an attacking uh, right back, uh, Neil Toby as an organizer from behind, um, Helman Kelele. Uh, Dr. Kumalo, Linda Butelezi, there's a lot of guys that I played with. And in Turkey, I uh, played alongside Ace Kruse, uh, one of the, uh, our South African uh, football legends. And your best coaches? Well, coaches are like uh, people. Uh, they have one thing in common, they're different. And from there, that's why uh, I, I appreciate all of them. They're always trying to do it the right way. It wasn't one special coach? Well, Clive. I mean, Clive would uh, allow me to, to express myself. He would even say from the bench that uh, dance shoes, dance, dance shoes. Shoes! Shoes! Shoes, your friends and comrades tell me that you're a very humble person. You've never, to your credit, forgotten your roots here in Dupcliffe. But they tell me that you're a natty dresser that you're a very good cook and that you read widely books. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, they say uh, you have to dress for success. You know, the way you dressed up uh, is going to tell about you yourself. And uh, I've always said that uh, the shoe, the belt and the watch will tell, you, will tell what kind of a man are you. And when it comes to cooking, yes, uh, my mom uh, is, a, is a good cook and uh, she does uh, catering and, and the likes. I think uh, I took that from, from, from her. And uh, Reading books? Reading at my place, at my house, there's a book in every room, even in the bathrooms. They say that uh, better miss a meal than a book. Clive Barker told me that he's coach soccer for 37 years and, and in that period the top three or four soccer players that he has seen yourself Lucas Dr. Kamala but he also told me that he saw many great club players but very few great international players and you one of them and shoes he paid you the highest accolade he said to me of you that you would be the Lionel Messi of South African soccer you had the ability to be very special he draws defenders. He wouldn't be a Barcelona game without a little Messi goal. Yes, thanks again. Uh, I'll take that as a compliment. And uh, I've always tried to to support and to contribute towards uh, the success of Shoes Musho as an individual and uh, within the group that I'm involved in and the team that I played for. All the time I always uh, uh, ventured into uh, being remembered as, as, a, as a success story.
your complete name is John Lasiba Mashua. Yeah. John means God is gracious. Yeah. Lasiba means a feather. Yeah. Mashua means white. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to have met you, to have spoken to you, and to have had this interview, the gracious white feather. Thanks, Oli. It's a pleasure and thanks for having me. And uh, I'll cherish this moment in years to come. Thank you. Thank you.